All right, so we are on July 1st, and I have already got ahead and offered quite a few players who I believe will help us become a better team. So first off, we have Rowan Woodward. Pretty average all around, but he was the captain of the Rochester Americans last year, so I figured it, it would be good to get more leadership. He had a 7-3 grade overall, and he only had 23 points, so that tells me he was pretty good defensively. So I'm hoping that he'll be able to contribute that way. Joel McKeever, he was actually a player for us back with the Atlantic City Boardwalk Bullies when we were there in the ECHL, and he's <laughs> gone through quite a few teams since then. But he has played in the AHL before, and he has had proven success. 55 points with the Iowa Wild a couple of seasons ago, 67 grade there. Uh, this past season, he played with the Delaware Thunder of the FPHL. And in 58 games there, he had 104 points. So I'm, I'm guessing he's one of the better players in that league. But nonetheless, he does have a pretty good track record. So I'm hoping that he's going to be able to come and pitch in quite a few points for us. In goal, I decided to sign Jean-Maxime Dorval. And then you have Rock Antoine Lazat, two and a half star ability, two-way defenseman. Uh, great determination at 19. Positioning is up there all the way at 20. So I'm, I'm hoping that positioning, plus the defensive read at 15, plus the checking at 14, means that he'll be a pretty solid rock for us back there on the back end. He was the captain of the Chicago Wolves for the past four seasons. And last season he had, in 70 games played, 33 points. I was about to say goals, but no, 33 points. And a 70 grade there on the back end for Chicago. Hopefully another solid addition. He does have championship experience with the Chicago Wolves too, in fact. So once again, bringing more veteran leadership onto the team. And not only that, but... Uh, someone with a championship pedigree. Then you have Stephen Langley. He's 23 years of age, two-way defenseman. He is kind of injury prone, unfortunately, but he is a three-star ability. So when he is in the lineup, he's going to be pretty good as he's is a really good hitter at 18. Positioning is at 16, defensive read at 14. And in the past two seasons with Texas, he has had a 70 grade and, it, and that stayed consistent. So I'm, I'm hoping that He'll be able to do the same for us. Then you have Shane Murphy. Real good positionally. Good at getting open. He's six foot six there, so he's a big guy. Uh, 34 points last year in 61 games played with the Utica Comets and a 69 grade. Then you have Brett Bovai. He is a three-star ability, I believe. No, two and a half star. Uh, he's an offensive forward. Offensive read at 16. Positioning is at 17. Determination's at 16. Real good mental category all around besides aggression and bravery. Last season, he played with Philly for six games and then with the Lehigh Valley Phantoms for the rest of the season. He was the captain of the Lehigh Valley Phantoms as well. Uh, 38 points in 66 games played, 68 grade. Looking good there. And then on the back end, you have Vincent Deschenais. For a defensive defenseman, he appears to be pretty good offensively. 18 passing, 16 offensive reads, 16 defensive read, 18 stick checking. He looks to be pretty solid. Uh, 14 positioning. That's one of his weaker defensive attributes as well. So I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing how this guy will simulate. Last season, he was with the San Jose Barracuda. 24 points in 68 games played as a 61 grade. And then you have Charles McMahon on the wing. He has a 16 in puck handling, 16 positioning, 16 defensive read, 15 team player. So not the most impressive uh, player on this list of players that we have approached. But still, nonetheless, he should be a pretty useful player, maybe on the fourth line. And those are all the players that I have gone after on day one of free agency. So let's see who signs and then we'll move on ideally to the preseason, presuming we get everyone, because that's all I really want to do at the moment. I mean, we'll review the roster again just to see what we're looking like after everyone signs, but I don't think there's anything else that I want to do. I mean, I might make a trade or two. I don't know yet. I, I guess it all just depends on if I can find a skater that I'm interested in. Uh, yep, we got everyone, and there's no trades that are really jumping out at me, so we may as well just go ahead to the preseason now. All right, so the preseason has come and gone, and I don't think we did terrible. I mean, we didn't do great, but we didn't do bad either. We won four out of our seven games, and even the games that we lost, we didn't lose too badly. Only 3-2 loss here, 3-2 loss, and a 3-1 loss. So definitely, at least so far, much more tame than our losses were last season. I mean, we were losing 7 nothing, 9-3, to that kind of game. So I think if we could keep that up, then we have a much better chance of getting into the playoffs this year. But of course, that was just the preseason. And we'll see what the regular season holds for us. Hopefully we can keep some of these defensive grades because looking pretty good there. Especially De Deschenay. Hartley, Adams, all in the high 70s. Then you have Daryl Maggs with a 70 offensive grade. And then in gold, Jonathan Parts. He, I believe, yeah, he had a 940 save percentage in five games played. 
So definitely looking forward to seeing how he's going to do. Now, Moorhead being the five-star goaltender, he only got one game played, 926 save percentage. So that, I mean, that's still a good save percentage. But after the season that he had last season, uh, I don't know. I'm a little shaky on him. I mean, he the season before he had a 918, so... I don't see why he can't get back there, but I'm a little nervous for him this season. I'll I'll just say that. But with that being said, we did show some promise during the preseason defensively, so I guess I shouldn't be too worried, at least not for right now. I guess we'll get through the first part of the regular season. I want to get through at least a month or two. I mean, if we can get through the entire regular season, that'd be great, but at least while we're in a state of not being entirely sure if we're going to make the playoffs, then I'm I'm going to take it a month or two at a time at first so yeah i'm gonna say we'll go up through to december 1st we're gonna be in the ahl for a while aren't we (laughs) we're five nine and one right now at the start of november so this is yep this is gonna be the hardest league to win no doubt in my mind yep as of right now we once again have the highest goals against per game in the entire league that is not pretty power play is still good so that's a plus but uh, penalty kill once again Leaves a lot to be desired. We're clearly in need of some better defensive players here. Either that or a defensive coach, but I mean, we had a defensive coach before and that didn't really seem to work either. All right, so December 1st, we're 12, 14, and 2. It's honestly not as bad as I thought it would be, but it's still not a great position that we're in. And for some reason, our trend of being terrible at home and actually pretty good at away uh, continues to baffle me. Goals for per game were not great, 2.96. Goals against per game has gone down since we last checked. It's at 3.32 now. We're seventh worst in the league, so it's I guess it's an improvement. Power play is still up there, 21%. At least that's doing well. Uh, penalty kill has actually improved, 83.3. So, okay, I'll, I'll take it. I mean, if we take a look at our roster, we have... Honestly, one of the more talented rosters in the league as far as overall ability goes. We have a five-star player in Moorhead. He was our goaltender. You have a four-star defenseman in Yevchuk. Then you have a few three-and-a-half-star players, several three-star players, and no one's less than a two-star, and there's only two of them. And then when you take a look at some of these other rosters around the league, I mean, there's some of that match up to us, sure, but then there's others, such as Lehigh Valley, who they don't have anyone above uh, three stars. And yet, they're 19, 7, and 5, and they're simulating fantastically defensively if we take a look at their defensive grades. And not even so much offensively, as if we take a look at the offensive grades, not much going on there. And we take a look at their head coach. He's an offensive head coach. I don't know how they're simulating that well. Like, I guess they just have the right makeup of players over there, because it certainly seems like we have a more talented roster as far as ability goes. And we even have, you know, we have an offensive coach ourselves, and we definitely seem to be better than them offensively, but that's, our, our record is obviously not as good as theirs, and they're at the top of our division. I mean, I don't like to compare it to other teams very often, but when we've been on this kind of run for the past two seasons and looking like three now at this point, you know, I have to wonder what other teams are doing that we're not doing that is somehow making them successful as opposed to us, you know? And it's not like Lehigh Valley's coach was even that good either compared to Shane Church. I mean, as far as their preferences go, they were basically the same. And then I think Church's motivation and tactics are higher even. So it's certainly not for a lack of trying. It is certainly not for a lack of trying. I've been making trades. I've been uh, making free agent signings. And of course, I haven't been going crazy with the, the movements or anything, but you know, I haven't been complacent either, I don't think. So at this point, it is getting a little frustrating, I must admit. So hopefully that can change here in this month of December. It looks like the first half of this month is relatively, well, I won't say easy, but it should be a competitive first part of the month at the very least. Then, of course, we do have Lehigh Valley. We have a game against Lehigh Valley in the middle of the month, and after that, it gets a bit more difficult. But still, we need to, we really need to find our footing here. It's, it's December 1st, and this is going to be a make or break month for sure. Because if we take a look at the standings, we're honestly not that far behind a playoff spot, but we need to start winning now if we have any chance of actually making the playoffs this year. So I think we'll simulate ahead a week and see how we do. Okay, so we're on January 1st now. We are 22, 17, and 2. That month was honestly pretty good. It was a pretty good month. That was, I would say, the best month we've had in a while. So we started out the month with a six-game winning streak, starting with Providence and ending with... Uh, Rochester. So of course, our our first loss of the month was against the Lehigh Valley Phantoms, as I expected. But then after that, we had a three game winning streak and then a loss right there, a win and then a loss. So we overall had three losses that month. Once again, I would say that that's the best month we've had in a while. Because remember, we started out, what was it, 12, 
14 and 2. So yeah, that was 10 and 3 on that month. That was by far our best month definitely of this season, if not since we've been the GM of the Wilkes Bears Grant and Penguins. So I will, I will certainly take it. Let's take a look at the scoring real quick. You have Covert leading our team with 37 points and 21 goals. And leading in assists is Stell with 23. Let's see our points scoring from the back end. Yep, Stell leads the way there. Uh, 18 points for Adams, 15 for Langley, 12 for Lazat. So no phenomenal contributions from the back end like we had last year with, uh, with Zhao Ao. Uh, unfortunately, we were not able to re-sign him. But we do have a lot of depth scoring from the back end this year. That is very important. And then actually, Brett Bovai... He is nearly point per game, 32 points in 34 games. So if he had played uh, 41 games up to this point, he, he would probably be leading our team in points. Although what Roger Covert is doing is is phenomenal himself. He's only 20 and he's doing this. He definitely looks to have a bright future. And in goal, a 921 save percentage for Moorhead in 27 games and a 901 in 15 games for Parts. So whenever Moorhead is in net, we've been winning more often than not. So it's, it's good to see... Him finally starting to get it together, especially after uh, last season. He did not have a great last season, 19, 29, and 2. So now he's starting to look more like the Moorhead from two seasons ago when he had that 918 save percentage. And now we'll look at the team stats. Goals for per game. We're actually up there in 7th with a 3.29. Goals against per game. We're still not great. We're 24th in the league with a 3.2. It's getting better. For sure. I mean, at some point this season, we were dead last for that category. So I, I suppose that's to be expected that, that we're not in the top half. But it's seeing improvement. That that much is certain. And then on the power play, we're great on the power play as always. 25.2 first in the league. And the penalty kill, doing all right. We're middle of the pack, 83%. I think what we're going to do, if we go through January and we have another month like we just did in December, then we can probably go through the rest of the season in this one. If not then I might think about making a trade or two, but I I really want to see how this roster does, just try to gel everything together. Because I feel like if you could put together a month like that, then you're probably a pretty good team. Like a 10 and 3 month, that doesn't come with luck. So I, th I think we could go ahead at least a month here and see how we do in January. All right, so we're on February 1st now. We are 32, 21, and 2. The past two months have definitely been the best I've seen this team simulate, basically since we took over as the GM. We started out the month on a four-game winning streak from Colorado up until Lehigh Valley. That's right, we beat Lehigh Valley. Then we did go on a three-game losing streak against Cleveland, uh, Palm Springs, and Laval. But after that, two wins against Stockton and Hartford, and then a loss against Henderson, and then every game after that, a four-game winning streak from Rockford to Manitoba. So out of the 14 games that were in that month, we only lost four. So we were 10-4 and four in that month. Like I said, this is the best that I've seen this team simulate since we started here in Wilkes-Barre, Scranton. So as a result, I don't want to change anything. <laughs> I mean, I, I wouldn't say the team has been simulating to an ideal level, but it's like I said, by far the best I've seen them simulate so far. So I don't want to mess with anything. So as a result, we're just going to go the rest of the season now. But first, we'll take a look at the stats briefly. Uh, Covert still leads the way in scoring with 51 points in 55 games played. And then Bovai actually over a point per game with 49 in 47 games. So those two look to lead the way in scoring. And then in goal, you have Moorhead with a 923 save percentage in 36 games played. And then you have a 910 for parts in 20 games played. So it looks like everyone's doing well. Check the team stats one more time. Goals for per game. We are third in the league with a 3.4. And goals against per game, we're actually in 17th in the league now with a 3 flat. Remember, before that was at a 3.2. So we're, we're definitely, we're seeing a lot of progress. We are seeing a lot of progress. And then on the power play, we're at 22.8, second in the league. The power play was never really a problem for us, though. And then the penalty kill, I, I believe that's as high as I've seen it in quite a while. 83.8, we are 12th in the league currently. So yeah, really no reason to worry. I, I think we can go the rest of the season in this one. Well, we're here at the end of the season, and unfortunately, Roger Cover, our leading scorer, has been called up to Pittsburgh. So that means we're going to have to go into the playoffs without him because we are first in the Atlantic Division. That is right. By going 45, 24, and 7, we have solidified our spots as the number one team in the Atlantic Division and in the Eastern Conference. So I uh, really cannot complain with this season. I mean, it, look, it was a shaky start for sure, and with... You know, how the past couple of seasons had gone. I thought it was going to be another no playoff year. But no, the, the guys, they really pulled through. And it was by far the best season these guys have had in quite some time, it looks like. We finished with 97 points. That is their highest total 
since the 2020-2021 season. And this is the first time that your wilkes barre Scranton Penguins will be in the playoffs since the 2028-29 season. And I believe that was, what, eight years ago? Yeah, because this is March 24th, 2037. So yeah, it's been quite some time for these guys. And obviously, as we see, they do not have any championships yet as a franchise, dating all the way back to the 1980s. So I think it's high time that these guys finally get their first championship. So let's hope for all-around contributions because we're going to need it, obviously, with our top point getter, Coverts, back with the Pittsburgh Penguins now. We did, in fact, lose a lot of scoring with him, but we do still have Bovai. Brett Bovai leads our team with 72 points in 67 games played, 35 goals season as well. And then you have Stell with 49 points on the back end, 31 points for Adams, 27 for Langley, 24 for Lazat, 22 for Novi. so just all-around contributions there. And in goal, you have Moorhead in 52 games played with a 9.29 save percentage. That is what you'll like to see. And a 9.12 for Parts as well. So like I said, really cannot complain with how these guys performed. And if it weren't for a 3-2 loss against Utica, we'd be riding into the playoffs on a five-game winning streak right now. But unfortunately, that's not the case. So our last game of the season was indeed a loss, but we did have a great season nonetheless. So I do not expect that to affect this team heading into the playoffs. So with that being said, let's see who we're facing. All right, and it looks like in the next one, we're gonna be facing the Belleville Senators in round number one of the AHL playoffs, which will be our first playoff run with these Wilkes-Barre Scranton Penguins. <laughs> 